Okay. Let's uh, take something that is incredibly complex and make it really, really simple so that uh, even a child could understand it. The Fundamental Secrets of Cosmic Mechanics. Now, I made a really popular video yesterday. I didn't think it would be that popular on uh, inertia and magnetism. Okay, let's... Let's see if we can explain some things really simply. I also told you that Mother Nature has her own type of line, and it is not the line of a human. As a human, we make a point and a line. Mother Nature does not work that way. There's not a single straight line in the universe, but let's get to that in a second. What about Mother Nature's line? Natura naturans actually would be the appropriate description. Point, even point is an incorrect term. We're sort of limited by linguistic... Uh, conceptualization. Obviously, language is only concepts and projections within empirical consciousness. That does not give us a true comprehension. We need to arrive at true comprehension instead of existential or empirical mental or conscious projections, which do not give us a true deep noetic understanding on the level of what we would deem true comprehension or wisdom. Mother Nature's line. This. Not this or this, but this and this. The line of a human being, point, line, is not the line of Mother Nature. We have a point, inertia, dielectric, a field. What is a field? A field is not a particle. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. What explains magnetism? Let's talk about the curvilinear nature. Now, I've explained in my book that uh, what magnetism is and what defines magnetism. Now, Faraday called magnetism the dielectric field, and he's correct. And that is no different, listen very closely, that is no different than saying that illumination is the field of light. Faraday said that magnetism was the dielectric field, and he is correct. That is no different than saying magnetism is illumination. And the light or the principle, magnetism is the attribute. This is Mother Nature's line the release of inertia. It is not a straight line, it is a curvilinear line. If you actually look at this line, this curvilinear line, and un overlay it again thousands and millions of times, you'll actually see a vortex. Everything in nature is a vortex. And I'll explain it to you very, very simply. Why? People have been trying to explain why is everything in nature a vortex? There is not a single straight line in the universe. Well, sure, this, compu this uh, computer's straight and the table's straight. No, I'm talking about in the uh, principle of Mother Nature why there is not a single straight line and what actually defines a vortex. Now, it actually would take me hours, and it will be in the fourth edition of my book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, the true denotation and connotation of a vortex. Well, let's take a look at this little vortex. This is an actual shell of Mother Nature. Okay, It's a true vortex. You know about a dog on a leash? dog on a leash sees a cat come by, reaches the end of its leash, it follows the cat around, it runs around. Why? Why is a vortex, why is a spiral formed? And when we overlay one spiral, we think of a line like this. I've already told you that this is Mother Nature's line, but her line is actually like this. And if you overlay this hundreds of times, you will see the exact same damn thing that I've shown you in hundreds of videos underneath the pharaoh cell, a spirograph-like pattern. Okay, That is called a hypotrochoid. Now, while I've explained in the book that magnetism is a reciprocating, processional hyperboloid, reciprocating, processional hyperboloid, there are only three principles of field mechanics that define all cosmic field modalities, longitudinal, toroidal, and hyperboloidal. Now, what's a torus? A torus is like a donut. Well, what's a hyperboloid? It's like an hourglass shape. Okay, we all know what an hourglass shape looks like. It's very, very skinny right in the center, two bulbous ends. If you actually overlay the mirror, and this is the conjugate nature of the universe. This is actually the cross-section from James Clerk Maxwell and Nikola Tesla's diagrams on an electrical circuit. You will see the conjugate relationship that defines magnetism. If you actually take a cross, this is be the toroid. The torus, the cross section of this would be the hourglass. Excuse me, not the negative. The negative image of the torus or the toroid would be the hyperboloid, the hourglass shape. This is the torus. 
What defines magnetism? Why are there no straight lines in the universe? Because everything, listen closely, is tethered. The conjugate nature of the universe, just like light and illumination, okay, is that everything is lashed ultimately to inertia, to ether. If we're going to say that magnetism, as Faraday accurately stated, and he was the first person to do deep investigations into magnetism, Nikola Tesla and the rest of the people prevent, uh, perfected uh, AC generators and, you know, all of our modern electrical system. But the first really, really intelligent statement was made by, Nick, uh, by Faraday. And he called uh, magnetism the dielectric field. And this is, like I said, exactly like saying that uh, magnetism is the illumination of the principle of light. Light and illumination, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. Do you notice the first two numbers in the golden section are 1 and 1? Why is there no straight line in the universe? Well, this is Mother Nature's line, as I've told you already. But this is Mother Nature's line in true, if I can bend it correctly here. If we take a cross section of this, overlay it many times, you'll see a vortex, just like you see in this shell. A logarithmic spiral just like you see in this shell. Why? Just like the dog on the leash. All force divergence, which is what magnetism is, and it actually, the, uh, the equation for that, the expression, is 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, which is actually have my discovery tattooed on the side of my wrist right here, is an expression. When people think, well, that's a number. That's phi cubed. 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, 4.23606, which is phi cubed. No. That is the expression of the loss of inertia. That is the expression of divergence. Lamore frequency, precession. Let's talk about magnetic divergence really quickly. Now, we know that the loss of inertia necessitates divergence, okay? A magnet does not have poles. It has the inverse of counter space. If you take a magnet and you slice it, as I've told you a thousand times, this is a long skinny magnet, if I could made a thousand slices out of this, each little slice would have three domains. It would have a quote-unquote north pole, a quote-unquote south pole, and a plane of inertia. That means that if this were a long skinny magnet, there is no north pole here and no south pole here and there's no plane of inertia in the middle. If I cut it a million times and each little slice has its own quote north pole and south pole and its own plane of inertia, that means that there is nothing located there. It is simplex pressure mediation. The real fundamental nature of understanding what magnetism is and cosmic mechanics is if you need to wrap your brain around something very fundamental, that if I cut something in two and then cut it in two again and again and again thousands of times, and it, this is incommensurability, point nonspecific incommensurability, if I take each little section and I cut it a million billion times and each little bit is exactly the same as the entire whole, this is exactly the same thing as taking a hologram, not a holographic negative, uh, uh, excuse me, a holographic positive that you're familiar of. Everybody's familiar with holograms on their credit cards. Okay, it's a holographic. I'm talking about a holographic negative. If you take a, a hologram of this shell, not the positive image, the one that people look at, okay? That's, a, that's, the, that's the other image of the hologram. If you take the original holographic negative and you cut out a little section, let's say this is a picture of the shell and I cut out a little section down here. If I reproject the laser light through that little section, you will be able to see the entire image of the shell. It's like, well, I cut out a, an image of the holographic negative way down here where there is no shell in the major, in the entirety of the, uh, of the negative. Let's say the negative is this large and I cut out a section down here. The entire image will still be found. That is, in, is, a, is a philosophical and metaphysical and field mechanics principle that the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Greeks knew and understood a small band of them anyway, and which today is like, it is as alien as a three-headed monster from Planet X. We have no idea what the hell incommensurability means. No damn idea. Here, here enters the great advantage of me being an expert in field theory and translator of ancient Greek and uh, poly. <laughs> 
incommensurability, point nine, taking that magnet and cutting it a million times, each little bitty section is exactly identical to the whole. So that means that there is absolutely no north pole located at location, locus, locus. In the Greek, it would be topos. There is no north pole located at here or south pole here or a plane of inertia, what is uh, what the modern science and physics calls a block wall, but a description isn't an explanation. It is not located there. You can't cut it out like, well, you know, I'm going to take a piece of bread, I'm going to cut out the meat part, you know, and extract it, and I'm going to be like, no, you can't. In the sandwich that makes up a magnet, it is absolutely impossible to cut out what the top slice of the bread from the bottom slice or cut out the meat. Do you, you need to wrap your brain around that for two seconds and think about that and pause this damn video and think about that. In the sandwich, if it were a magnet, there is no section that you could cut out. Do, do you understand what that actually means? The philosophical ramifications and the nature of the metaphysics and understanding field mechanics and magnetism is the most fundamental principle in the universe. It is that which defines volume and everything. You can't cut any part of it out. This is not my opinion or belief or feeling. This is a hardcore damn fact. I slice the, the sandwich. I'm calling a magnet a sandwich here. I can't cut any portion of it out. Each little bit that I cut out will be exactly the same as the entire whole, except in magnitude smaller because it will be a slow, smaller slice of the magnet. What defines a magnet is field coherency, and it operates off the Lamour frequency. Gyromagnetic precession. I assume you know what a gyroscope is. Okay, this would be a gyroscopic precession, just as the Earth processes like once every 10,000 years, I believe. Is How is what we see underneath the ferro cell directly applicable to understanding cosmic mechanics? Okay, and the loss of inertia, i.e., what we would deem magnetism or illumination, we have not only extension from a point, and a point is really an incorrect term because this is totally non Cartesian. We have this. We have a curvilinear vortex. But what we're really looking at is not merely Mother Nature's line going like this. It is going like this, but at the same time, and this is hard to grasp visually, it is going like this and like this at the same time. And when you combine this with this, you end up with this. Overlay that a thousand times, and you'll see that spirograph like hypotrochoid pattern that defines the most fundamental pr you can even see it looking at it right here if you take a look if I were able to bend it properly and I'll do it for you here and take a look at this okay you will see that spirograph pattern of these curvilinear lines that forms a toroid the torus of magnetic divergence you can see that it's just the same line overlaid over and over and over again the dog on the leash. Okay, we got the dog here. We have uh, the other end of the leash. The dog is chained into the yard. We have a stake in the ground. This is the part you need to listen to, too, okay? Let's talk about magnetism and the dog on the leash analogy. We have a stake in the ground, and on top of that stake is a rope, and we got the doggy on the other end, the doggy being magnetism, the stake in the ground being inertia. The dog can go round and round all at once, but it's only going to go in a curved pattern spiraling around until it eventually arrives back at the leash again. It's going to wrap that leash right around the stake until it arrives at the stake. That is how everything in cosmic mechanics from any, any, cosmo, any galaxy in this universe works this way. Is a dog on a leash. There is not a single straight line because there is no... Listen. There is not an untethered dog in this entire universe. And by untethered dog, I mean magnetism. There's nothing that is going straight out. Everything is not like this. It is like this. Because everything is tethered to inertia. Force in motion, inertia, and acceleration. Magnetic divergence, centripetal convergence. This is why we see the hypotrochoid underneath the ferro cell. Because that loss of inertia is tethered like a dog to a leash to eventually return. Yin and yang, the conjugate nature of the universe, light and illumination. It is that simple. There's only longitudinal, toroidal, and hyperboloidal. Hyperboloid. Hyperboloid is an hourglass shape. Toroidal would be a donut shape, which 
I can't really actually show you the donut properly here. Let me, it's hard to open this thing. Here we go. Right in the center of which the negative image of this is a hyperboloid. I'm showing the torus right now, and if I take the negative image of this torus, you will see the hyperboloid. And that, folks, is Lesson Fundamental 0001 of Cosmic Mechanics, and the entire universe works this way. It's irrefutable and it's undeniable. It can't even exist any other way than this. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, drop a buck or two. But I appreciate you watching, okay? Bye.